All right, so we're getting ready to do the oil change on the Corvette. So three things right off the bat you're going to need. Your Mobile One full synthetic engine oil, 5W30. Your Mobile One oil filter, the M1201A. Protection for up to one year or 20,000 miles. Trust me, we are going to hit one year about 1 20th of the time before we hit 20,000 miles. And you'll need one of these dudes from AutoZone, the half inch M12 crush washer. It's like a little copper guy with some rubber there. It's gonna go on the oil drain plug and that'll keep it from sealing because these plugs do not come with any sort of gasket from the factory. All right, sorry I got this thing on the ramps and I went on a Harbor Freight run with this thing after work. I drove the BMW to work. And then I uh, went on a Harper Freight run with this guy while I got that coupon for Memorial Day weekend. But I got on the ramps because to jack it up, you can't jack it up from the center, but Jack has a problem clearing that. You almost need a couple of people to like lift up on the front end while you slide that thing under. So this is easier to do by yourself. And unlike the BMW, you have to go pretty damn far underneath this thing. Almost to the passenger compartment to even get to your drain plug. So hopefully I can fit the bucket under here. But way back in the back here is your 14 millimeter drain plug. So we're going to go ahead and wrench that thing off and collect the four and a half to five quarts of oil. Saying from the factory holds four and a half. Uh, however, these M1201 oil filters are uh, kind of big. They give you like an extra half a quart, I think. So it'll be about five quarts is what's going to end up coming out of this thing. So I'll be right back. All right, I probably should have put this thing on the bigger ramps because there's just no room to get under here to film. But we got the 14 millimeter deal off, so she's a draining. And, uh,. I'll use these massive channel locks to bust the oil filter off once I get most of the stuff out of the crankcase. Alright, so you can see we got just a little bit of dripping now. Not much going on. Got the oil filter magnet off too, by the way, to let anything that may have captured drip. And the point I was making with this oil filter is I only ever hand tighten it on. But I've never been able to take it off by hand. I always have to use this massive set of channel locks to manhandle it off. So, uh, if you were wondering how tight you need to get it, just hand tight. And you will still need a tool to get it off. Even with the engine being as warm and toasty as it is. So, now that we got just a little bit of a drip going, I should be able to fit in there. Unscrew that with the channel locks and then we'll be good to go. All right, so I uh, used the channel locks, get the oil filter off. So now we're just dripping a little bit from the pan and whatever the remnants coming out of that thing are gonna be. And anybody who's watched my channel long enough knows that I like to let my oil changes take at least 12 hours, ideally 24 or more. Uh, this one's going to probably take somewhere between 12 and 24 because unless I plan on washing and waxing this car tomorrow as it sits, I will probably just go ahead and add the oil after I button it all up tomorrow, put everything in, and then uh, after I do that, I'll probably back it up, wash, wax, and by wax, I mean Ibiz wax. And then uh, this thing's going to be put up for the rest of the summer because it's Camaro time. Why are we not focusing? Better. Okay, so what I'll probably end up doing is, boom, getting that done, whatever time in the morning. Uh, that'll be sometime more than 12 hours. It'll be just be barely dripping at that point. Get the oil change done. We'll reset the oil life monitor, show you how to do that in the AM. And then... Wash this thing, wax this thing, and then it's getting put up for summer, and the Camaro is going to be taking its place as the leisure drive car for the summer. And the BMW will continue to be the primary driver, daily driver for the summer. So 
Uh, be back in the AM for you. It'll be a couple seconds. All right, next day, back out of the car. Got the oil filter magnet back on. Got this guy back on. Now, we don't do torque specs on this because, remember, we got a little crush washer in here. It's a copper washer with this rubber inner, uh, part in the center. So, this, you just go tight. Not so tight that you strip anything, but just tight. You'll see the rubber start to deform. It'll start to kind of crush up against itself. And then you just torque it until it's tight. Done. Don't go too tight. But don't go not tight enough. And that's all wiped off. So now we just got to get the new filter on and we're ready to fill up. Not bad for 3,000 mile oil, I guess. So that's all the, that's what we've recovered. Gonna grab the new oil. You have to put a little, little bit of film around this so it doesn't stick. And then we're gonna get a small funnel and we gotta fill up the filter. Since this goes straight on from the underneath, you can fill this up before you start the car so you're not starting up dry. All right, so filter's full of fresh oil. The ring's all lubricated, so we'll go ahead and screw her back on. And to do that, I used one of these here filters, or uh, funnels, not filters, derp derp. And then I uh, just stuck her down in there, poured her in, boom, done. All right, filter's back in, hand tight. And I don't believe it's any coincidence that every time I do tighten this by hand, it's always right here where from the front of the car looking back you can see that it's clearly a mobile one extended performance the m1201a every time i've hand tightened it it always rests in this spot where this is clearly visible and i can turn it by hand no more so that's when you're tight don't take a tool don't torque it anymore this is it because you're you're gonna need channel locks to get this thing off in a year or whenever the hell you you change it again so and as you can see, you don't really have a lot of room to maneuver your channel locks or any other tool, so you're going to need the channel locks. You can just get them in here. You'll be able to move it to loosen it with relatively little effort with those tools, so just keep it in mind. This is as tight as you go, no more. And everything else under here looks pretty clean. Transmission pan's nice and clean. This was all kind of oily though, so I may have some sort of an oil leak on the front of the car that after every so long it drips its way back here, but transmission seems good to go. So let's pour the five quarts in and we're boom done. Funnel setup, I got one of those big weighted funnels, so it'd be a little easier if the valve cover wasn't at an angle, but yeah, this will work. You can pour in one glorious go the whole remaining four quarts. I'll use this time that we're pouring to go ahead and describe the reason why we're changing oil before we store the vehicle. A lot of people think you want to store your vehicle and then when you take it out for the season change the oil. That's the exact opposite of what you need to be doing. You want to change your oil before you put it up in storage. All your oil has byproducts, combustion gases, and other contaminants in that oil. You don't want all those contaminants sitting in your crankcase and in your engine block and degrading your rubber seals, causing all kinds of havoc in there. So you want to keep the contaminants in your oil for the least amount of time possible, which is why you change your oil before you store the car. And then once you break the car out, it's got fresh oil already in it. You're now good to go to drive it for the season. All right, boom, done with that. And in case I forgot to mention, always uh, recycle your oil, your used oil, by uh, returning it from where it came from, which is the ground, the earth, because on this channel we are environment friendly, of course. All right, now to reset the oil life monitor. I can do this from memory, I'll do this once a year, but you turn the key to the on position, do not start it, and then you have to press English metric, English metric, then hold gauges, and you'll see the change oil flash. It should go solid after a little bit and then turn off, I believe is what's gonna end up doing. 
Okay, there it is. That's it, oil life monitor is now reset. Boom, done. All right, now we'll be able to get this thing off the ramps and uh, if I can talk the wife into being nice and help me iBiz this car and get this thing waxed and put up for the summer. All right, let's see if we got any leaks and if not, we're good to go. Sounds fine to me. It looks okay. Thing looks okay over here. Let's go underneath, make sure we don't have any leaks. Little filter looks fine. Drain plug looks fine. Oil cooler. Everything looks fine. All right, so after checking the oil level, it was halfway between the full and add, so that massive oil filter must increase the capacity, not a half quart, but a full quart. So it takes five and a half quarts to be completely at the full. You can get by with just the five. You'll be a half quart low. But if you have any sort of oil leaks at all, you may want to go ahead and get your six quarts put five and a half in and then toss the uh, extra keep the uh, the other half quart on standby I guess that's how you do your oil filter and oil change on your LT1 Corvette and how you reset the oil life monitor thanks for watching guys peace